Hello guys, um, this is just a quick video explaining how I perform my live set with FL Studio as some people have asked for my live setup. So let's first, let's just dive right in, let's first get over the equipment I use. Um, it's just a Lenovo laptop, stand-up laptop. You will have to get something that has um, quite a bit of RAM and a good processor because um, the way that this live set is performed is pretty he heavy on your CPU and um, so you will need to have something that can, um, you know, uh, deal with that. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. I've never had problems with this one. I don't know the exact model, but you will find something, I'm sure. Um, then I have two FL Fire, um, Akai Fire, sorry. These are um, just door controllers, MIDI controllers that are made to go with FL Studio. And the great thing about these is that they are actually designed especially for this sequence of view. Because if you look at this, you know, it has the green dots on the left side and then it has the channels with the colors. And if you look at this, that's the dots on the left side and it also has the channels with the colors. The thing you see right now that's flashing, <laughs> Um, it's great that it does. It always does this when I first connect it. It says MIDI devices have changed refreshing. Um, this I think also has something to do with the processor of the laptop being um, a little bit overworked, but I'm not sure. Um, it has happened to me while I was playing. Um, and this is actually why I've connected this at my home because I want to test it before I go to Czech Republic tomorrow. So, um, apart from these two, I've just connected them with USB to my laptop. Make sure you connect them before you start up your project. This is also very important, otherwise they can malfunction. Um, and then I have uh, my audio interface here. Just ignore these inputs. You're only gonna have uh, the outputs of this if you're doing it like this, because all of the audio actually is produced by the laptop. Um, and then it gets sent out from the audio interface. This is just like the in-between point of like Random stuff get it out of the way uh, in between point between your laptop and the mixer of the club or um, stage or party you're performing um, And this one in my case is connected via USB-C because I fo actually found this port a very short while ago I thought I only had two USB ports, but then I saw okay. I have a third one which is USB-C so this is my first time trying it like this, um, seeing if it works better because my last last time I played, I actually had like four um, errors, like four times the audio completely cut out. Two times it was the audio interface, two times it was one of the controllers. Um, and I think this was because of uh, me using this USB hub um, because I thought I only had two USB slots, so I have uh, invested in a quite a good USB hub actually. If you're gonna get one of them, uh, make sure it's good quality and at least USB 3.0. Um, but as you can see, I'm trying not to use it because it seems to be like the most, um, the thing that causes errors the most. So right now the MIDI devices have actually refreshed a second time, which is a little bit worrying. So I'm gonna go into options and audio settings to see if everything, okay, there we have it. Um, is it it's set to FL Studio ASIO, which of course is the wrong one. We want to have this as Moto M series, which in my case is my audio interfaces, uh, audio driver, sound card. Um, if you have a different USB audio interface, of course, this is gonna say something different, but just make sure um, this uh, has your sound card selected of the of your um, audio interface. Um, then I'm gonna go in here, see how the buffer size is. Um, in my case, I like to have the sample rate at 44, 100. It is enough for a club situation, trust me. And also, it really um, relaxes your GPU in a way. Um, and this with buffer size, I like to um, go up as far as I can as well. Now we are at 93 milliseconds, which is actually a lot. I'll have to try around with that if this is actually okay. Um, um, otherwise, I will reduce it again. But the 
bigger your buffer length is, what this means, the buffer length, I'm just saying things without explaining them now, um, is this is how fast your uh, inputs get transmitted into the door, basically. So if you have a buffer length of 93 milliseconds, um, that means every time you press a button, you have 93 milliseconds of delay until it actually does something. And you can think of it as if, you're, uh, if you play video games, it's the ping, basically. It's your ping. Um, and 93 milliseconds, if you've ever played like shooters, is uh, a lot. But I'm just going to try to see how it feels. Um, I'm actually going to change it right now to like half of that. Because I think everything up to like 50 milliseconds is uh, workable. Um, and your GPU and CPU will thank you for it. Okay, now let's, that's just the basic setup. Now let's talk about how this project is actually set up, you know. Um, so the way I do it uh, is I don't use the performance mode because there is uh, another mode in here, which is called the performance mode, which works a lot different than this uh, step sequencing mode and I don't like it. Uh, the performance mode basics basically lets you launch um, patterns from like a view and you can launch like different patterns and set it up however you want and I really don't like that workflow and it's just really not uh, well developed in FL Studio so what I uh, like to do which is I think more optimal with these controllers is just stay in this uh, pattern view basically and how I've set it up is basically I've created a huge pattern like a really long pattern this is like um, you know if I scroll down you can see there's like a lot of channels like um, I don't I don't even know how many channels there are and I just play it from top to bottom basically um, of course I don't play every channel at once because that would be overkill and that would also kill my CPU <laughs> I also I have it set up in a way that I have like different parts in here um, and I have this I have made it in a way that I have color coded it so every time a new part starts I know it because the first thing that's always up there is the kick or something that's uh, some sample that can also be used to transition between the parts so if I see okay there's kicks um, in this case this is all my intro um, until here and then this second kick here is actually my first part and if I now would play this part let's say I want to show you this part then I would have to just scroll down using this with one of the controllers um, and I can also scroll down with the second one and because I already see this here I can scroll down for more or let's scroll down to the snares actually so now I have one on the kick and bass channels and one on the snare channels um, I've just you know added these instruments in and then placed uh, steps and created like my pattern like this um, it's basically the same thing that you would do uh, on a groove box where you have like different tracks on a groove box you have, uh, always have different tracks and you have a kick track a snare track a hi-hat track and so I have a kick track a baseline track a snare track a couple of snare tracks actually a clap uh, open hats and so on and so forth um, these are all synthesizers, as you can see it's 3 Oscillator, my favorite synthesizer. And yes, so let's just try to play this. So first of all, quick little tutorial on the Archive Fire. If I want to solo this kick channel, I hold shift and then I press here. Now this is in solo and if I press play we can only hear this kick now. And it's actually loud as fuck. So let me turn on the volume so my neighbors don't knock on my door. <laughs> okay, this should be fine. There we go. And it's actually uh, 64 steps, I think it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 10, 10, 12, 11, 14, 15, 16. Okay, it's 32. Um, so it's like four bars, I think. So let's add the bass line. So yeah, that's basically it, you know. 
and then if you have it set up like this you can always mute and unmute certain parts of the groove and it's very fun to play this way I actually don't want to stop now this is always the problem if I check if my live set is working I don't want to stop because it's really fun playing like this and of course while playing you can also add kick rolls and if you want to add it to the end you can also scroll over there using um, these you know this is used for um, sidewards if you wait there you can see it you can always see this red box this tells you where you are with this grid of your controller and with this knob you can just scroll up and down the playlist and it's always um, really fun because a lot of times you don't even have to look at your screen I only look at my screen to know where I'm at if I scroll a lot if I want to skip a part or certain things okay so that's that's it. that's basically it. you um, add your channels you add steps into the sequencer and then you just leave the sequencer running and looping around and you mute things and unmute things um, that's the first part of it at least second part of it is of course um, using knobs and changing certain parameters of your sounds as you go along because only uh, muting and unmuting of course is, bo is boring not only for you but also for the people who are listening to it so the another thing you can do um, is as follows so let's um, choose this synthesizer track um, let's actually see which one we're gonna use let's take the 17 so right now this would be I have color coded this very poorly but it's this one let's see how it sounds I've just soloed it hold shift press it all right okay so right now if I would um, we're here this says channel right now if I would change any of these knobs um, this sound wouldn't be affected by it because it's not selected um, and you select a channel by holding alt and pressing this so now this light lights up this means we are now controlling this channel or track if you will and um, in if this is an internal synthesizer of FS studio or if it's a drum sample that's utilizing the sampler from FL studio these are actually already assigned to what they say on top here so this is volume, this is pan, this is the filter, and this is the resonance. And you can also see an indicator here. If I would to show you, if I would show you here, this would all just be this filter here. You know. also very fun um, and for a lot of synthesizer this isn't um, set up like this this just controls the basically this page um, and this page is on a lot of things in FL studio but some uh, synthesizers just don't have this for instance if you have a flex channel let's see what if, which of these I think this is flex yeah this is flex so let's solo this one this is the green one right here it's already selected because i clicked on it in fl um, and it's a nice little groovy pad stuff <laughs> very nice and right now if we are in the channel 
we can change the volume. We can change the panning, but the filter doesn't actually do anything because this doesn't have the FS, FS Studio's integrated sampler filter. You know what I mean. And um, if you want to change any other parameters than the ones that are automatically assigned, if it's an FL plugin, what you can do is assign um, up to eight parameters per controller to random stuff. So you have user one and user two here. And uh, in this case, I have the volume of user one set up to control the filter of this pad. And the way you assign this is also pretty simple. You just um, right click on the thing you want to assign to a knob, you press link to controller, then this pops up. And then if you change the parameter you, as the knob you want to assign it to, this will disappear. And now it's assigned. And this is all there is to it. Yeah, and that's basically it. Um, another quick tip, I like to uh, reference the parameter which is set up linked to my controllers in here in the name of the channel. So this is P1, which tells me asset P1. Okay, I always use my top controller for the assets. So one is user one and P1 means pan of one. So this asset is actually being controlled by the P pan one of the top controller, as you can see right here. Ooh, cut of moving, yes. Noise. Um, and that's it. <clears throat> of course, in the mixer track, you have a lot going on. I have all 125 mixer tracks um, used up here for some things. And I should have used a lot of more sand tracks in hindsight. Um, but that's something I'm going to do with my next live set. <laughs> um, also sand tracks are a great, great thing. If you have a lot of like pads and stuff, you, um, and you're running out of um, knobs you can assign to things. You can have all of your pads, for instance, can run into the same sand track or bus track here. And then you can assign a knob to change like a, a filter in the, um, in the mixer, you know? So all of, a lot, you can have like unlimited amount of synthesizers being changed by the same filter and then you have only one knob that that does it does it if you ever run out of options because if with two controllers you have 16 knobs which is a bunch but if you run out this is also an option and i also use it uh, a bunch for things that go into the same uh, mixer track anyways but that's basically it two fl studio uh two akai fires and fl studio in the sequencer. This is how you do it.